welcome to Knit One Heart Part 2, two. Episode 128. Yay! I'm Sheila, also known as <laughs> Sheila D37. And I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Wendy. And I am <laughs> very sweaty today because I just ran. So, um, and I still have to exercise for another half hour after this is over. So please excuse my appearance. And yes, my sports bra has stained my white shirt pink. For reasons unknown to me. I don't Sorry. think they probably wouldn't have noticed that. I don't know. It's... No. I just wanted them not to know that I didn't, like, <laughs> spill juice down my front. <laughs> I mean, I look bad enough, but... Yeah. If this is your first time um, watching us, we usually don't look this messy. Hey. I don't. Sorry. <laughs> I was say, speak for I didn't, I didn't think I looked that bad. <laughs> I didn't mean to include you in that. Um, <laughs> and if you are a return viewer, thanks for coming back. I'm coming from work. That's yeah. my excuse. She's What's coming yours? from work. I came from the gym. <laughs> That's my excuse. So, um, any shout outs from you this week? Uh, no, I don't think so. So. We're still running um, two knit along crochet alongs. One of them is a sweater theme, and the other one is a hats for donation to charity theme. And you can find the links to those in our show notes below this video. That'll take you direct, excuse me, directly to our Ravelry group. Um, every project that you do just has to be finished during the contest period, which ends October thirty first. And um, if you do multiple projects, please post separate pictures of them so you have multiple entries yes. in the contest. So, um, and also at the end of the show, we are going to draw the winner of the Halloween yarn from Vesper. So um, stay tuned at the end. <laughs> I was going to say no, it's Vespa, but no, it is Vesper. <laughs> I just want to throw. I just want to throw a Boston accent on everything. Vespa. Oh my like, no, Some it's Vespa. Vespa yarn. No, it's Vesper. Sorry, yeah. Vesper. Sorry. So, yeah, this is going to be given away at the end of the show. So, um, on the dance card, I believe it is your turn to go first this okay. week. Am I correct? Uh, I don't know. You want to tell me how to pronounce it? We'll work on it. Falhaluz. Falhaluz. So, I'm doing Falhaluz. F-O-L-H-A space L-U-Z. So, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I really do apologize. <laughs> um... This is what it looks like. It's pretty. It is pretty. And it's got little leaves in it. And it's more of a... Uh, the leaves are done wherever and whenever you want to. Um, but she does have a pattern written out if you want to do it like hers. Yeah. So I am doing it um, in... Leading Men Fiber Arts. I had to think of the exact word. Leading Men Fiber Arts. Leading arts. Men Fiber Arts. Their by card Steve, looks like this. Steve, who's from Dramatic Knits. Uh, the colorway is. Oh, please tell me I have the card. I don't. It is. Oh, what's the colorway? Lightning Bug. Lightning Bug. I had to think about it. It's so pretty. And so right now, <laughs> I had to cast on quite a bit of stitches. <laughs> You cast on a lot of stitches and you do a five by three rib. And I think I'm actually showing you the back. We're going to do a more in-depth um, review of this yarn in yeah, the well, bubbles and bling section. But I'm working on this. It's really soft. And I'm doing it on size five needles. And then you cast on a heck of a lot of stitches and then you reduce after a while. Cute. And I'm on uh, the part where I'm trying to figure out how to untangle my yarn. <laughs> there we go. So uh, I'm calling this my spring shawl because uh, when Max saw the colorway, he goes, oh, it reminds me of spring. And it does. It reminds me of the leaves that just come out during the springtime. Yes. You know how they're a nice light They're green. that bright color before they get kind of a dark Dark color, green. Yeah. yeah. So that's all I have on the needles. And actually, let that me... That reminds me of a poem. It's Nature's First Green, green is, is Gold. gold. Her hat is huge. What is it? Her heart is hue to hold. Tall. Her early leaf's a flower, but only, only so, so an hour. hour. Then leaf subsides, subsides to, to leaf. leaf. So Eden then sank to grief. grief. So dawn goes down to day. Nothing gold can stay. And if anyone read The Outsiders, the outsiders they'd, they'd know that poem. Stay gold. Stay gold. <laughs> <laughs> stay gold, pony boy. <laughs> I can't remember who wrote that poem. Oh, who wrote the poem is Robert Frost. Robert Frost. 
Cross. That is Robert Cross. Okay. Robert Cross wrote the poem as he Hinton wrote the book. Stay gold, <laughs> pony boy. I should change the. I should change the name of the show. Oh, no. Stay gold. <laughs> Stay gold, uh, the boy. pattern Farha Lose is by Carolina Cavallo Cross. And tell them where you got this pattern. This was gifted to me many, many moons ago by Knit Pearl Girl. Um, Carrie Steinmetz. Yeah. So, who um, passed unfortunately away last year. passed away almost a year ago. Yeah. Not quite. So I was looking for a pattern that would do good with uh, textured stitches as well as show off some of the talking it so it was a good mix yeah i like the pattern a lot thank yeah. you carrie Steinmetz. thank you and uh that's all i have on the needles um so i have a couple of things on the needles uh the first thing i was just got done showing sheila this i've made quite a bit of progress on my zoom loom blanket i'm still waiting for the yarn from knit picks it should be at my house today so i'll show you that next week but i now have 60 squares and I'm loving doing this. This That's is good. so much fun. And um, every single square is like an adventure to me. I never know how it's going to turn out. So um, as soon as I get the yarn, I'm going to crochet an edging around every square. So I'll probably do a few a day. This is nice. Whenever I need a little break from my um, regular knitting, especially if I'm watching a TV show, that I want to pay closer attention to. Mm -hmm. I just do, I zoom a few squares. <laughs> zoom a zoom a zoom. Zoom a zoom. And um, this is in my Knitting's My Bag blueberry bag. I love that. So that's number one. Um, number two, my I have cast on for the hero sweater. And for those of you who haven't seen it on every single podcast in the last <laughs> month, um, I will show you what it looks like. Hero. Here it is. This is the Hero sweater. It is by Julia Farwell Clay. And I actually won this pattern because I was the first person to complete Skipper D, another one of her sweaters, which is one of my Rhinebeck sweaters. So I have cast it on. It is in um, Valley Yarns Berkshire in the eggplant colorway. That's the main part. Um, it does, the, the sweater does have a folded hem where you knit the hem and then you fold it over and um, sew it together. But I made some fit decisions about this sweater. I love the way Julia um, Farwell Clay designs her sweaters to fit at like every woman's body shape. They're not all just cute on really skinny people. She really does think about the shape of a woman's body and where to place the decreases. But... I know that having a folded over hem in this um, Aran weight yarn is going to add bulk to my hip area. I am a pear-shaped person. I don't need extra bulk there. So I decided to just do the one-by-one -one ribbing um, that they use on the um, sleeves and the neck and to just forego doing the um, folded hem to avoid that bulk. Um, the other thing that I modified is I wear, I know from past experience that the 45 inch bust sweater is the one that will fit me, but I'm a little concerned about the hip area because I'm pear shaped. So I decided to knit one size up for the bottom. I'll decrease to the waist and then I will, um, increase to the bust size for, um, the smaller size. And I do that a lot on sweaters. Um, ever since I read Isolde Teague's Little Red in the City, um, it's an easy way to get a better fitting sweater. Not everybody is the same size and proportion as the Craft Yarn Council standards. Right. You know, and um, the hips on this 45 inch hips, 45 inch bust, it'll be better for me if I go up a size and that way I know it'll fit nicely in the waist. So that's what I'm doing. I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm about to start the decreases. So I'm placing stitch markers to mark where I need to do the decreases. And I think I went a little too far. I need to count. So I'm not going to work on that anymore while we talk. So that's coming along. And I'm really excited about that because I, when I get to the color work part, which won't be for a while, 
I am going to use this new bag that Lois gave me to try out that I can put my um, two colors in. Oh, that's right. And this bag will keep them from getting tangled up with each other. So I'm really excited. I'm kind of excited to try it. It's one of the things I hate about knitting from two skeins. This would also work great if you are alternating skeins. I'm not going to alternate skeins because I'm too lazy. I don't think I need oh, to with right. this. It's commercially dyed. It's not hand dyed. So that's happening. <clears throat> and that is in my knitting is my bag mustache bag. My new, my new pet bag. <laughs> so I have that going on. Let's put this in. Yeah. And I'm knitting it on my signatures, and I have to tell you, they're the interchangeable signatures that I got um, as a replacement for the ones that oh, broke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one side keeps unscrewing. I'm not sure why. Not, um, they're the... Interchangeable cords. Yeah, but what brand name? You didn't give the brand. Signature. Signature. Yeah, Did you get one the of the signature name brand? I don't know. I don't remember, but the signature interchangeable needles. Yes, yeah, so that's what they gave me. One side keeps unscrewing. It's not good. Maybe I didn't screw it tight enough. I, I keep meaning to pull it out and fix it, and mm. then I forget. Until it happens Until again. Until it happens yeah. again, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm going to try seeing if that's just going to keep happening or if it's... <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. Sorry about that. <laughs> Look what it is. <laughs> I turned that off. So, um, <laughs> anyway, um, that's the, so I did the blanket. The next thing that I worked on this week are my aquaphobia socks, which are in Into the World Pococo Sock in the Muse Pooling Colorway. And how long has that been a this project, is a project of, shame? of shame? These have been on the needle for at least a year, at least a year possibly longer and I am like so I just need to do like two more inches and then the cuffs and I'm done because I don't make tall socks um they're coming out great I did quite a bit of work of these work on these when I was on the ferry to George's Island in Boston, Har Boston Harbor this weekend and then I realized I had made a mistake and I had to rip it all out but I'm back on track now so I'm enjoying those although these are um, chagu needles, and you don't one like of these. Chagus, do you? I'm not a fan of the cord on chagus. Yeah, I like chagus. But the needle is so sharp, it poked through my pig bag. It poked through the hiney <laughs> of one of the pigs. Poked through the hiney of one of the. Pigs? Yes, you can see. I fixed it so you can't see the hole anymore. But that's where it poked through. Like poked through the inside. It's in a um, Jessalu sock bag. It poked through the inside, the lining, the um, interfacing, and the outside. That's how sharp these are. But Jessalou showed me how to fix it so you can't see the um, hole anymore. See? All fixed. But it was right in this pig's butt by his tail. I was like, oh my gosh. So, yep. That's in my bag with its feeling spunky button. Because I bought this at Spunky Eclectic's booth last year. So that is on the needles. And last, oh, this is a sad, sad project. Oh, no. This is the seashell shawl. It looks a bit worse than it is. Um, I have finished the thing, the body, and I have started to knit on the um, edging. Let me just tell you that I am going to be ripping this edging out and starting over again. And the reason is <laughs> that, first of all, you have to knit this on a... Um, provisional it's a provisional cast on so I made the string on the provisional cast on like way too long and it keeps getting tangled up with all these other strings some of them are where I like ended the um like I broke the yarn so that I could start knitting the thing and then there's another one where I added the yarn and then there's it's just all insane and um I need to start, I'm, I, lo I made a mistake somewhere. I'm not 100% sure what I did wrong. I need to rip back to the very beginning of, the, um, of this. And I'm going to make this, this shorter so that it's not in, in my way so much. And I'm going to weave in the ends that are getting tangled in because it just keeps getting messed up. And then I'm going to start over again. 
Let me tell you, this is this is going to be a pain. This is like half of a chart. <laughs> I'm going to have to do a lot of this. What do you mean half of ugh. of the chart for the edging? I have to do this a lot. But you knew that going into it. I did, but you I didn't. didn't realize how annoying it was going to be. And, yeah. So, yeah. It's not going that well, but at least I got it going. But, you know, I have to do this all the way around the entire shawl. <laughs> it's going to take a long time. So, that's on the needles, but I'm, I'm not happy at, with it right now. I'm about to put it in the naughty closet. Uh -oh. That's how mad I am. And this is in my fish-themed bags. Seafood. Seafood. Because yeah, it's shellfish. It's, really it's shellfish. It's not really fish. So let's go on that. And that is knit on my signature needles out of um, Blue Moon Fiber Art Socks That Rocks Silk Thread 2 in the spruced colorway. And that's all I have on the needles. Mm -hmm. Do you have any dates to rate? I do. Yes. Sheila has a date to rate. So, as everyone knows, I started the clogs. Did I start them last week on the show? Yes. Well, no, you had one half done on the show. Oh, that's right. I have both done. Not only are they done knitted, they, they are, are done felted. felted. These are for my mom. They are. We kind of did an exchange. She knit me socks. I felted her sweat, uh, slippers. Because my mom gave up. It's so, such an easy pattern, though. I know. You know my mom. She's a stick in the mud. you got to try it again because it's, it's such an easy pattern. So these are them. I felted them to an inch of their life, so they should last quite a bit. Uh, I'm concerned that they're going to be too small, no. but I have bigger feet. My mom has tiny feet. But also, th these will stretch. Those are going to fit her They're fine. still a little damp, but overall they're not so bad. This is the Felted Clogs by Bev... Bev Galeskis. I can never who remember. Who passed away recent, like two years ago. Didn't Bev Galeskis pass away too? I don't remember. Um, I did it without the bumper, but that's what it looks like on Ravelry. I don't have the pattern with They're me so once cute. I was done. I put it away for now. My mom will was done on size 13 needles, which I forgot to bring. With you can me. have them. My mom is never going to use them. You don't them. think so? No. Okay, size 13 <laughs> needles. If she needs them, she'll let you know. Well, because I already have, obviously, <laughs> a set of my own. Um, size 13 needles, worsted wool held together. Held this doubled, yeah. Was patterns in the harvest colorway, I think it was yeah. called. My son has a sweater out of this. I have a ton of this in my stash. It's a pretty, I like it. It's a, it's pretty, a pretty, yeah. I it's like orange, too. purple, and green. It's pretty. I have some too, and it's funny watching some of it pool. This here is when I actually, you can see some pooling here and here, and that was because I um, used one skein with the ends pulled out either way. Oh, yeah. Because I was running low. <sighs> but, oh, so these are done. I love I'm them. jealous. I wish I, I made some for myself, you which need I to will. Make another pair. But I wanted to do something else first. Yeah, I'm glad that you cast on a shawl. I think you'll yeah. enjoy that. And the fact that I've got this far done, considering I had to cast on 459 stitches. I know that's pretty amazing. I got this much done. That's like an inch in less than a week. I know. I'm pretty amazed. So am I. For you. So that's my finished object. Um, I did rip out a project of. Shame? Is that yeah. what you call it? What project of shame did you write? I was trying to do those felted ballet slippers. Oh. Um, I only did like two soles or whatever. What's it called? Oh, the French press yes. Yeah. French press. I remember Yeah, I, I ripped press. that out. So those would probably become felted clog slippers. Yeah. That was a fiddly. It is a very fiddly one, and I don't even know what made me possess to do it, but... There's a couple of others that look very similar in that if they're done in a different construction, like Duffers. Duffers is a really nice looking felted slipper. Yeah, I like that. So, I don't know. I'm always into trying to figure out a different felted slipper. Yeah. But let's face it, nothing beats Bev's. Bev Galeskis. That's why there's how many? It's a very popular felt collection. 9,830 finished projects listed yeah. on Ravelry alone, never mind anything else. And that's in the adult size. Yeah, I know. They do a kid, they have a kid's pattern, too. So that's my finished project, and I hand them off to you. Thank you. I will put them over here. 
where they will go to my mom when I leave next weekend. Um, I have one finished object. I was going to wear it, but it is still damp. Um, I finished my hand-spun sweater. How do you like the collar? Are you still... I like the collar. It came out good. I was worried about it, but I think it looks pretty. looks good. Um, I love how the um, yoke has these two colors in it. I just, I think it came out really pretty. Um, it's still really damp and I'm really annoyed. I blocked it downstairs in the, um, smells like wet wool. Yeah. I blocked it downstairs. I, I washed it on Wednesday and I pinned it out downstairs to make the shaping, you know, right. And to get the sleeve shaping right. And the cats got into it. See? Oh, um, because even though I had told my kids to leave the door to the basement shut, somebody left the door open and Ollie went in there and pulled it all out of the, up, like, cause he loves this wet wool. He loves wet wool. He was into it. He was all over it. When I was pinning it out, I could barely keep him away really? from it. Yes. And he pulled, not only did he like, he like rucked it all up, but he like, clawed it a little bit so there's a couple places that have pulls and he pulled it out of the pins so I have to re-block oh. it <laughs> fortunately it's still damp yeah. so I'll just you know lay it out again but I'm annoyed because I told my children and I actually caught my son leaving that door open yesterday morning and I said keep that door shut because the cats are going to get in there on my sweater so this is why I need my own craft room that no one can go in Except me. See, I don't have that problem because I don't have animals. Yeah. And my boys know better. In the sense of, like, they see something pinned out, they know they're going to get hurt if they step anywhere near it. Right. My kids would never right. do this. But I don't have animals, so I don't have to worry about it. If anything, I have to worry about my husband. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm annoyed. I'm very annoyed by it. But, um, yeah. So, it's... And it would still be wet because it has been so humid here. I didn't have a fan blowing on it, and it's very heavy. It's yeah. air and weight, so it'll get dry. I'll wear it next week to show it off. I think by then it will be cool enough to wear it for a few minutes on the show. <laughs> I'll put it on next week, so you'll see that again. Um, and that was knit out of hand spun from Diabolical Yarns in the flower shop Inferno Colorway. I spun it myself, and I spun it intentionally to stripe, and then I based my sweater loosely on Fantastic, the pattern Fantastic. Oh, that's right. Um, let me see if I can see who that's by. Fantastic by um, Material Sign It. The only thing that's the same about my mine and this pattern is that I put garter ridges on the yoke. Nothing else is the same. I completely rewrote the math. I rewrote the shaping. I rewrote the style of the arms. I rewrote the um, neck, wrist, and um, hip ribbing. I rewrote everything. Um, I like the idea of it, but when I sat down to knit it, it just it wasn't going to work with my gauge and... That right. I realized it, it had it short. Very, well, it seemed very loose knitted fabric. For yeah, a it just wasn't going to work well with my gauge, and I didn't like the short row shaping. I prefer. I have another way that I sh I just do side shaping. So I should have just written my own sweater pattern. I could have written that sweater pattern. So it is what it is. But um, in case anybody wants to knit one that's similar, you could use this pattern. So that's it for Rate My Date, and there are no whirlwind romances this week. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. I know there are other things I wanted to bring over. Um, I brought Wendy over some uh, clothing for her son that my kids outgrew, yeah. but I was doing this at 3.30 this morning, and I'm like, I know I'm probably forgetting stuff, but not anything important, but just I cleaned out my stash, and I wanted to bring what I had over. Yeah. So I'll see you next week. Right? Yeah, you will. Okay. So, crushes and heartbreaks. Yeah, what do you got? Uh, Zachary had an appointment yesterday, follow up with his rheumatology. They're very happy with how he's going. Good. Uh, they are going to talk with the liver doctors about possibly weaning him off his medication. To see what happens. But they're not sure because the liver doctors are also using it to keep his immune deficiency at a level where he won't reject his liver. Right. So they may not. She goes, he's like a shooting target. 
<laughs> a moving target. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. He's a moving target because they, he he's not like anyone else. Right. So they don't have anyone to judge him by. So, and they don't necessarily want to test him. They don't want him to be the test subject. Right. Oh, which is fine. But otherwise, she says, looking at him, you would never know what he went through. I'm like, I know. I know. You're lucky. I am very, very lucky, and I know that, and I count my blessings every day. I know. Um, heartbreak, I still have no hours at my other job. I work today. So I worked Monday, and I work today, which is Friday, and I will not work again until next Friday. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but a lot of people are unhappy at that place because of certain drama and one person is looking for a job, so I may get other hours, but I'll be looking for a job as well. Yeah. I have to study for my exam on the 28th, which people are basically said, good luck to me. You'll be fine. <laughs> Just because the study material they give me isn't on the test. I'm like, well, what's the freaking point? So You'll I gotta pull that fine. out. I gotta make sure that I do my practical because we have a practical, and then just do my best. You'll be fine. I know I will. If uh, one girl who already took the test and who got hired after me can pass it, I'm pretty sure I can pass I it. I know you can pass it. I so, have confidence in you. Then I will become a licensed phlebotomist. Yes, I nationally licensed. A part of my um, heartbreak it has to do with phlebotomy. <laughs> But I'll tell you, first, my crushes, my hip, I went and I had my annual physical. I have it every September. And the problem with my hip is not sciatica, thank goodness, because that is difficult to deal with. Yeah. And it is not arthritis, which I was a little worried about. Um, when I had heart failure in 2006, they ran a panel on my blood for um, various genetic markers mm -hmm. to make sure, and other disease markers to make sure that my heart problem had not been caused by a virus because sometimes viruses can attack your heart muscle. And I have the markers for um, arthritis and lupus. Mm -hmm. um, it hey doesn't you. mean that I'm going to get arthritis right. or lupus. It means that I am more prone, prone to it than like your average man on the street um, because of genetics. So my doctor said to me at that time, if you ever have like recurring pain, don't just blow it off. He said, mention it to me because the earlier we catch it and start treating it, the better it will be. So I, you know, I injured my hip flexor muscle in May or June and that was pretty bad. And then it seemed to go away over the summer, but then it started up randomly like a few weeks ago before I got into my new exercise routine. So I knew it wasn't from that. And um, I was really nervous that my hip pain was from okay. that. But it's from something called my ITB. It's a tendon or a muscle that goes from the top of my butt down the side of my thigh. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been stretching it, and I feel a million okay. times better. He showed me stretches to do. I do them every morning, and that's I feel so relieved Good. because I just could not take one more like mobility issue after my. I'm so done with my legs not working the right way. I am. I'm done with it. So I was very relieved about that. So that's my crush. My heartbreak is that um, I had to get a tetanus and measles or mumps, mumps. booster. <laughs> I can't. MMR. I got. I, I got the tetanus. It was a combo shot. So it was tetanus and... DTAP? It might have been DTAP. I don't know. He told me what it was, and I was just like, I don't just give it to me. Like, But um, the last time I had a tetanus shot, I ended up in the emergency room uh, a few days later because my arm swelled up to the size of a baseball. And I'm really sorry to say that... Um, oh, it looks better today. I am starting to get a red swelling where this Ooh. shot was, too. <laughs> And it is swollen there. That has nothing to do with phlebotomy. We don't do no, that. No, that's number one. Mm, that's so I say, have that going that. on. And then this is, that is the phlebotomy. phlebotomy. This is how... This woman was excellent. I did not feel the needle going in, but this is what happens every time I have blood drawn. Except when Sheila did it, my bruise wasn't this big. It was very small. But see, even a really good one, I always get a bruise. I was really careful taking the tape off. Usually I get a bruise from ripping the tape off, too, so I didn't get that bruise. But You know, you don't have to have tape on after you blood draw. You can just hold it. She put it on before like, before I could say anything. Because there are a lot of patients who have delicate skin, because we deal with the elderly, that I don't put it on. What I do is I hold it, and I hold it, and then I stop poking to make sure that it doesn't spontaneously stop. Yeah, again. That, I... 
I have learned from, I have really delicate skin in this area and I have learned from past experience that if I just rip it off, I get like, it looks like a giant bruise. So yeah. I, I think she, she a did a needle or a butterfly. She did a regular needle and I think she made a mistake going for that vein because that vein is, that vein is old. I mean, it's beat up. Um, I think she might have done better doing a different vein that wasn't so toe up. But if it's the puffier or the stronger the veins, and that's mm -hmm. the one you go for. Uh, but this is just to show you. That's how... This is this is minimal bruising for me. Usually I get something about this big. This was a good phlebotomist. But I asked her about her. She actually took the nursing assistant thing. So she learned... Because she gave me an EKG too. Oh, okay. So that office um, would pre prefer to hire one person to do everything. It's she has... Work. She does... Um, a lot of it. Everything. She does yeah. like... The pap smears, the internal exams, she does EKGs. She's like a medical assistant, yeah. licensed medical assistant or something. But it, I always ask now whenever the, anybody <laughs> draws my blood because I'm just curious. So that's my heartbreak. My arm is, <laughs> this arm is beat up, man. <laughs> and I'm doing an exercise program where I am, it's called Push Ups Free. And it's on my app, it's an app on my phone. So I've been doing push ups according to this program and it, it hurts to do them when my arm is all like banged up. I bet. But I'm pushing through. So that's it for my crushes and heartbreaks. Um, Bobbles and bling. We have a review this week that we're really excited about. How can you review it when you haven't? Well, I'm going to review what I can review about it, and you're going to review. Yours is going to be more in depth. Okay. So we were um, gifted some yarn from. Steven. Steve at Dramatic Knits. Dramatic Knits. And his partner, Andy. And they are leading men fiber arts. They started their own little yarn dyeing. And you can find them at shop.leadingmenfiberarts.com. And um, they have... I, I We were talking about it last week. Steve has, I think, a different color sensibility than a lot of the people I've been seeing online. So um, I really like it. I, he asked us if we wanted some yarn to review. And I said yes. And I told him, I think I gave him six of the colorways. One thing that I like about his shop is you can look at his colorways in one part of the shop. You can see everything that he does. Um, so I just told him, these are the colorways. Just pick anything from your shop that's like one of these colorways and I'll be happy with it. And um, this is the colorway <laughs> Envy. I'm sorry, I'm looking at a shop now and he's got a shop listing as prom queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw that one before. Um, this is Envy and I did not tell Steve this, but this was my favorite one of all of his colorways. So I was thrilled that he sent it to me on the ghost light base. 875 yards of 80% superfine merino, 20% silk, and it is a lace weight. And I'll show you. That's how thin it is. And this yarn, I, I, I wanted to cast something on with it, but because I have that silk shawl, I just feel like I need to finish. If I start something with this, I'm never going to finish right. that because no, that's I already understand. like borderline being naughty closet, <laughs> being thrown in for a punishment. Um, but I want to knit with this so bad. It feels amazing. Um, it feels like a really, like a good hardy base. And I think that's because of the lace. I mean, the silk content in it. And it, it's got a sheen to it that's really nice. I wish you could see the color better. The color is warmer than it's showing on my screen. Um, and then 875 is good yardage for um, lace weight. And I just love it. And I love it that he sent me something that I, I really enjoy knitting with knitting lace. Right. So I, I think, see, this is how I know that Steve is truly my internet boyfriend because he, <laughs> he, he knew which one, without me telling, he knew which one was my favorite color. And he picked the base that I'd be most likely to really enjoy because I'm not much of a sock knitter. Right. And um, so I love this. I cannot wait to... Um, knit a project out of it. I think I'm going to knit Samil out of it. And um, while Sheila's telling you about her yarn, I'll show you. So Steve approached me as well about reviewing his yarn, and I picked my base. Uh, I picked what's called um, the Showstopper base, which is 
75% merino wool and 25% nylon. And it was a fingering weight because I figured that was what would work best for me, whether it was sock yarn or um, whether I used it for a sock or I would use it for a shawl. And it came. I let him pick the colors. I told him what colors I liked, like a general, you know, jewels, whatever, greens, blues. And he picked the color for me, and I love it. I love the bright colors. Um, it reminds me of Kermit the Frog. <laughs> it does a little bit. So my son said it, it reminded him of spring. It does remind me of it spring. It does. There's the, you know, the new buds coming Stay on the gold, tree. Stay gold, Pony. <laughs> pony boy. Oh. <laughs> That's got to be called the Stay Gold Shawl now. It's got to be called it. So I, I, I took a little while to find. Um, I knew I wanted to cast on with this now because I wanted to review it. And you all know me and casting on and knitting things. <laughs> I was almost done. Actually, this motivated me to finish the slippers. Because I wanted to cast on for this. I love how it it's feels. It's so soft and squishy. The yardage is about 463 yards. Now, I brought this to work with me to yeah. wind. Let me tell you, winding a ball of 463 <laughs> yards Take a was while. a pain in the tail. But I got it done, and I cast on. And I'm like, oh, thank God. And I used stitch markers to cast on that length of thing but it is very soft and squishy it is i'd say it's a it's a light fingering weight <clears throat> um reminds it has a smooth twist it doesn't have a bumpy twist I, it's a really nice twist um the only time i had issues with it unraveling was when i was casting on and that was because i was actually going against the twist yeah that always happens when i do my cast so on. there was no way i could go around it by pulling from the other side because it was in a ball so yeah. i just had to suck it up and deal with it um but that was user error more than anything it's a dream to knit with so far it's soft and squishy and like i said i chose the pattern i chose to show off the stitches to show off the yarn and the stitches it's a solid um yarn color and i think the pattern will do well by it it's going to do i'm doing a twisted stitch and garter stitch and stockinette and I'm doing a leaf motif so it should be should be interesting to see how that works out. One thing that both Sheila and I noticed and commented on about this yarn is how saturated the color is. My gosh. It is amazing. It's like wool mize level saturation in terms of how bright and saturated yes. this is. He has some of his colorways on his site and it's leading men com is how I found it. Oh, I just did it from Yeah, I know. I don't know shop.leadingmenfiberarts.com yeah, is sure. what it says on here. It's on big if you start if you look for leading men fiber arts, it's gonna take you here. So I like this color here. It's called prom queen. <laughs> I like that one too. I love it. I like this color. Oh, he's doing fiber now. He's got some in there. I might have to order some. So fiber. look at this blue. That look at how vibrant that blue is. He has some really vibrant solids that are I'm impressed with. Um, I love this colorway. Which one is that one? I don't know if it will do the colorway. Fuzzy navel ghost light. Oh, see, I like I'm, I'm drawn to everything that he's done on silk. All right, so fuzzy navel is the name of the colorway. colorway. Ghost, ghost light, light is, is the lace, lace weight, weight base, and that's a 875 yards. Mm -hmm. Super pretty? fine merino and silk. I didn't see Fuzzy Navel when I looked the last time. There is a way on his page that you can look at all of his colorways. Alien Attack Angel Hair. Look at look that. Look at how vibrant Angel Hair is. It's a yellow. It's very saturated. Is that Drag Queen? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> I love the names. Fiber, fuzzy navel. I'm trying to read this. I can't read them backwards, but industrial. I love the blues. Industrial is one of my favorite Into ones. Into the too. woods. What's that? Jazzercise leggings. Oh my god! I love these names. So funny. Prom queen, saffron, sandcastle, sangria, sucker punch. To grandma's house. That's a nice red one. Well, that's pretty. So, um, we'll continue to review this as I work on my yarns. My, yeah, my shawl. I love it. But it's all already soft and squishy. I am very picky about the lace weight that I knit with. Yeah, you are. I am. I'm very picky. I'm very brand loyal. And I have to say, I am thrilled with this just from touching it. Like, this is nice lace weight. And I'm so glad because we like, Steve is an internet friend of ours. But we would... 
be honest with any product review, and I'm so glad that we can give a rave review yeah, to this. I agree. Um, and it's well deserved. So this is awesome. Good for this you, is Steve. Good for good you, job. Steve. Can Steve I hope, and Andy, good job. And this is what I'm going to knit with mine. And I think with the Ooh, leaves, it's going to be so gorgeous. And it's going to be very pretty. It, let me tell you, I might put that in the naughty closet and cast this on just because. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, it is. I'm really excited. I love this. is one of my favorite colors too. So yeah, Steve and knows I you. I put an Instagram picture of this, and I asked people, "Do you envy my envy?" Because that's the colorway. So oh, that. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. And so Andy, we I appreciate encourage it. you to check out his shop and um, try out something on there. Um, support their new business because I th I don't think you'll be disappointed with what you get. It's pretty nice. At least if you buy one of these two things, these are pretty <laughs> awesome. Can't say I know every base, but these no, two. No, these two seem two nice. Two out of two, man. <laughs> pretty good score. So, um, gossip and innuendo. We have to, we have drawn a prize for the, um. Halloween sock. Yeah. Halloween sock yarn. What did I do with the Halloween sock yarn? I have yarn? no idea what you did with Fell it. to the floor. Halloween sock yarn, which is trick or treat on Vesper sock yarn. Vespa. <laughs> Vespa, which Sheila <laughs> thought was Vespa, but it is Vesper. Vesper sock yarn. By Knitterly Things. And this was amazingly donated to us by a viewer. Thank you very much. And uh, who... Well, the person who won this, I would really like to see how this knits out. Yeah, I'd please like show us how it knits up. Um, let me see if I still have the number. It was post number 111. Yes, it was post number 111. Um, Brunswick Knitter, also known as, known Lu as Luann, she is going to knit a um, Miss, Miss Winkle, Winkle by Martina Bem. It's um, really pretty. Martina Bem is the woman who did the Hitchhiker, I think, and... Um, a bunch of those progressive All right, because it, it looked like, um, yeah, it reminded me of, like, a hitchhiker. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, she's done a lot. I really enjoy Martina Bem's um, designs. I think they're really pretty. Miss Winkle is fascinating because it's got, like, a looped edge on it. That's the Miss Winkle that yes. Luann Brunswick Knitter wants to knit She has designed several very pretty side to side knit shawls. Yes. If you pull up Martina Bem, if you click on the designer, you'll see it. So Luann, PM me with your address, and I will send this right out to you, and I hope you enjoy knitting with it, and I can't wait to see how it turns out. Yeah, she's got Lefty, which lefty. a friend of ours has done Lefty several times, and it looks gorgeous. Lefty, Hitchhiker. Brickless. Brickless, yeah. She's done Trillion. Trillion. Trillion's the one that I knit, and I really enjoyed that. I'm thinking of doing another one with my I, loop. Um, stitched by Jessalou's. Jessalou, the owner, has a loop bat that she spun, a gradient bat, and she knit a trillion out of it, and it's gorgeous, and so I want a coffee here. Because uh, um, I have my spun loop bat just sitting in my stash. I don't right. know what to do with it. I'm like, oh, it would look really good as a trillion. Thanks, Jessalou, for the tip. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just going to Lillian, copy her. Uh, PMS, Brunswick yeah. Knitter, PMS. Brunswick Knitter. Send us your snail mail address and we'll get this in the yes, mail. Yes, I will mail it to you. Um, the, uh, speaking Thank of Jessalou, I have an announcement about her. She is still running her summer, va her summer vacation bag contest. I'm going to link the information again in our show notes. I thought she was done with it, so I took it out of the show notes a couple of weeks ago, but she's doing it through September. You can win a 25% off um I think it's a, you can win a 25% off code or you can win a percentage off code for entering or get one. I don't know. I shouldn't even say this. I'm sorry, Jess. Lou, don't even listen to what I said. I'm going to link to the information and let you look at it yourself. But you can get a code for entering that gives you some kind of a percentage. And you can win a bag, I believe, of your choice or a money towards an amount towards a bag of your choice. So um, check that out. Um, oh, and I have an announcement. Um, we have been approached by one of my favorite designers. Um, you, if you've watched the show before, you know how much I love Stephanie Talent. 
And she is the one that did California Revival Knits, which I reviewed last year. And I also knit the wrought iron cardigan. I actually test knit the wrought oh, iron right. cardigan for her before her book came out. She has curated a group of patterns and put them into an ebook collection called Hitch. And um, it's based, they're all based on their theme. The theme is Hitchcock movies, knits that are inspired by the films of Alfred Hitchcock. This is what the cover will look like when it comes out. You're going to see a lot of really amazing stuff. She is editing and curating it, so she put them all together. Um, we're going to be on her blog tour. Oh, nice. So we are actually going to review this book the first week of October, and we are going to be giving away a free ebook, um, just like last time. And here are just a couple of patterns, sneak peek. This is the exact decal. This was designed by Stephanie herself, and it's really a pretty cable-y cowl. It is pretty. And the other one that I have to preview is the Baywater watch cap. And this is interesting. I think it's got um, cloth and a, a stitch pattern. You can see there's like a cloth lining in it. Sorry. I was in the middle of a twist. That's another view. So that's really interesting. I haven't really looked at it yet. You need to be able to sew on buttons. In the movie Vertigo, Kim Novak's character throws herself into the bay under the Golden Gate Bridge. This watch cap uses two color garter stitch and short rows to mimic the spans of the bridge. And um, elongated slip stitch to create choppy waves. A pop of color by way of a fabric colored button band gives drama and fun. So those are just the two preview patterns. I think they are on Ravelry if you want to look at them. I'll link to them in the show notes. And um, more where that came from in October. So I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be a fun review. And, I have um, one more thing to mention before we're done. So oh, we're I'm just going to say the last yep. thing is all of the festival listings are still in the show notes. So you can check those out. All right. Um, if you recall, I mentioned Jimmy Fun Walk. That Melia Bella Melissa from the His and Hers podcast was walking. She uh, her group of I'm not sure how many people raised fifteen thousand dollars. That's amazing. It is amazing. She, uh, Melissa Melia Bella raised I think fifteen hundred on her own. That's amazing. Uh, through the help of knitters and other people, and I donated a skein of wool mice, which I don't ha currently have on t me right now, but I wanted to congratulate the winner, which was uh, wool pierogi. Oh, Will Pierogi. Yeah, Becca. Will per also known as Will Pierogi, and I'll be sending that in the mail to her. Yay, Becca. So Great. Thank you for donating to the Jimmy Fund. Absolutely, Bunt. yeah. And congratulations on winning a fabulous prize, because yeah. Will Mines is a pretty fabulous prize. Mm, that was nice of you to donate mm. that, Sheila. Thank you. I like to help out where I can. So that's good. Um, I can't always help out monetarily. <laughs> I know. I think so. you've done enough. <laughs> yeah, well, well. Just, you've lived it, you know? Yeah, I have lived it. And, uh, what was I reading? Oh, there was a post, sorry, there was a post on, I think it was Facebook, about one of the local, um, opinion writers in either the Herald or the Globe spent a few days in Children's Hospital with her 19-year-old son and, you know, she was trying to give him the space because he was 19 years old, and right. she wrote a little piece about it, and it was really kind of nice about, you know, the parents walking and stuff, and it was, yeah. just brings back the memories of children's. Doing, we were there with the, my daughter a few weeks ago, and she wasn't very sick. She needed to be seen in the emergency room, but she was not sickly. Sickly. She was not in any kind of danger. But there were kids in the emergency room that were, um horribly sick and I just felt I just it's awful it is it, it is awful you know reading this brought back some memories I mean it was good memories as well obviously because I have a very successful positive outcome yeah but uh you know children's and the Jimmy Fun Clinic we're very lucky to have them even the Shriners Institute any any hospital clinic that deals with children we're very lucky to have and them all the people area. my neighbor is a nurse at children's um all the pe all the healthcare workers that deal exclusively with 
exclusively with children. That is a tough That's job. That's a calling. Yes. Not just because, you know, it's medical stuff, but it's with medical stuff with kids. That's really Get that's to you. tough, yeah. So, so, so thanks to everybody who donated yeah. on the Jimmy Fund. We really appreciate yes. it. Yes, and um, I don't know if they're still taking donations for the bladder cancer um, sock pattern, but that is still linked in the show notes. So if you are feeling like you want to knit a pair of socks for your friend for Christmas, that would be a lovely way to do it. Mm-hmm. Buy the pattern, and um, some of the money that you donate towards the pattern will go to the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network. Oh, good. So I think that's all we have. I think that is. Uh, Rhinebeck's coming up. We got about a month away. We have to order buttons. Oh, yeah. I need to talk to you after that, about um, after this, about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, that, I think we'll be recording next week together unless you get work. I have, well, no, <laughs> I am working Friday, but I'm only working scheduled till nine, just like today, so. So, we'll see you next week. Have, have a, a great week. week. Knit, Knit with, with heart. heart. Bye.